Super Mario, for, and Super Metroid, sorry, for a minimum of five seconds. Oh wait, just save them. That's what Shantae would do. $50 from Amoro. I love watching AGQ and even on my potato internet. I can do it. Thanks to all the runners and down with the cancer. Good ending, Silent Hill. $5 from Jason Crochet. I lost an uncle to cancer and I have an aunt struggling with it now. I hope this little bit helps fight against this horrible illness. That was a big one. Oh, actually, this one, we have a $667 donation from Ian Stocker from the Escape Goat 2 team. 2015 is the year of the goat. Sacrifice the animals. I'm a big fan of seeing the devs actually donate for this, so personally, it's nice to see, see that happen. Plus, the dev stream was pretty hyped. Shout out to that, too. or $10 from Snowy Snow Wolf. Watch for many years, first time donating. Just wanted to say, Vulagen, I'm rooting for you and hope you kick ass in EG2. And when you are taking back those Bastion World Records, much love, Snowy. $10 from Danable. I love watching AGDQ 2012. I've been watching since AGDQ 2012 and I have loved watching all these games being played to such help, help such a good cause. This is to donate for the cause, and maybe win a prize, of course. Save the animals. Just a reminder that we are being sponsored by Humble Bundle, and if you want, you can check out the awesome games done quick Humble Bundle on HumbleBundle.com. Pay what you want for up to nine games, a Twitch Turbo subscription, a subscription to Expert Premium, and exclusive merchandise, all while supporting Prevent Cancer Foundation. That's www.humblebundle.com. Another neat way to uh, support the Fair Foundation other than just donating is subscribing to the, the uh, Twitch service. All donations, or all subscriptions go directly to PCF. Plus you get all those sweet emoticons in chat, which I know you love. One of our great sponsors also is Tiny Build. Tiny Build Games is an indie developer which morphed into an indie publisher. They partnered up with indies across the world to help better their games as well as development games themselves. Check them out at tinybuild.com and check out their game Speedrunners, also available in the 2015 Humble Bundle, which I just mentioned. $5 from Peepop Dot. Always love watching the GDQs. Thanks for everyone for all the hard work and amazing runs. $5 from John Four. Already made a humble bundle purchase. Plus this $5 donation will go towards saving the animals in Metroid. $50 from Farteen. Just want to send out a shout out to my friends James and Mike. And just a reminder of, for everyone, all the proceeds that we get are going towards the Prevent Cancer Foundation. Prevent, the P PCF, or Prevent Cancer Foundation, is the only nonprofit in the United States that solely focuses on cancer prevention and early detection. Each year, more than 1.6 million Americans alone are diagnosed with the disease, and more than half a million die from the disease. 
However, research shows that up to 60% of cases and more than 50% of deaths are preventable with what we know now. The Prevent Cancer Foundation focuses its efforts in research, education, outreach, and advocacy with over, one, with over 138 million invested over 29 years. And who is supporting this? Well, we are Awesome Games Done Quick. Awesome Games Done Quick is a Games Done Quick event held every year in January featuring Speed Demos Archive and Speed Runs Live communities. SDA, or Speed Demos Archive, is a website that hosts over, speed runs over a thousand games with forums that help new players and old players discuss uh, all sorts of game tech while commonly trying to speed run games. You can follow them at SDA Speedruns for their Twitter. SRL, on the other hand, is the premier website for speedruns and racing live. If you want to race games or talk to people who race games, that is the website to go to as well. So check those two out if you want to learn more about speedrunning. We have a $25 donation from Bailey. Let's go, Vulagen. Do you bonk the balloon grout proud? You have to flex when you finish. If you're looking for other ways to support the donation and want to show something for it, you can visit theyeti.com. Right now, the Yeti is a t-shirt website featuring a new design every 24 hours for a low price. The Yeti is partnered with AGDQ 2015, offering an array of search with $3 from every purchase going to Prevent Cancer Foundation. So you can check out the collection at theyeti.com slash games quick. Get a shirt, support charity, win-win. We have a $3 donation from Alvi. It's not much, but I really want to donate since it's for a great cause and a great event. Also save the animals. $5 from Loose Goose Mammalian Moose. Fight the good fight.
So coming up shortly is going to be Escape Go 2. Now, if you like this game, this is one of the games that it's in the the uh, humble bundle. So if you donate at least ten dollars, you can get this game plus a loads of other cool stuff. Yeah, I guess. Okay. Okay. Am I alive? Want to do balance checks? Okay. Uh, am I on yet? Doesn't sound like it. Doesn't sound like it. Uh, Think there's no is one. Mike 2 on yet? Okay. 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 Do you hear me? Is it? Oh. Right. Okay. How's mine sounding? Good or not so good? Well, By the way, be very careful about the power strip that is right yeah. in your feet. <laughs> I'm just going to keep my legs right here the entire time. <laughs> Don't ever move, <laughs> ever. That's fine. Can you hit this one for a second, please? Uh, it's one, yeah. Oh, he's got a $150 donation from Tom and Janet. Donation in honor of Stinger PA from your parents. Yeah. We see that many victims. We see the many victims of cancer every day. Early detection is the key. Hi, mom and dad. <laughs> oh, good evening. Excellent. Okay. Um, the upcoming game is going to be Escape Go 2, which is an indie puzzle platformer. Um, pretty easy to learn, but really hard to master. And it's a race between Stinger PA on the left side on your screen and Woolichin on the right side. I'm not sure if it's right on camera. But in any case, um, the controls are pretty basic. Jump, double jump, and the dash. I'm explaining this because right in the first level there is going to be something um, a little bit out of the ordinary if you have played this game yourself. So I think we are ready. Okay. Okay, three, two, one, go. So already in the first level, there's going to be a pretty substantial uh, part of the speed run, which we call the boost jump. Basically what this allows us to is abuse the jumping mechanics to jump just a little bit higher than it's intended, to jump one block higher and go, well, in very many levels just not quite the intended path. So overall, this game has exactly zero randomness to it. So it's all player skill. Also, unofficially, this game is also a little bit about controller versus keyboard, with Stinger PA on the keyboard and Bulletin on the controller. Also, with you can already see Stinger PA is already a little bit ahead, but this can very quickly change since this game ca has a lot of tricks and very finicky things to it where you can easily, very easily die and have to restart the level. Also, as mentioned, the boost jump in this game is incredibly difficult to execute. You can see on Stinger PA's screen right now, he's trying to dash boost jump. This is really difficult to do because um, right after a dash, he does not have any time to jump, so he needs to basically have really perfect inputs for that. Also, kind of the beauty of this game for speedrunning is there are many solutions to many levels. Um, more of, most of the time, they are intended solutions, but sometimes we don't go quite the intended way. So, the basic uh, idea of the game is to collect all the keys and then head to the exit in every level. Also, the players want to collect, I think, eight sheep souls in total to be able to unlock the final area and to escape the tower. Seven. Seven? Okay. Yeah, it's seven. You skip Temple of Adoration later in the run. Right. Okay, in any case, they are already now in the second portion of this game, which is the Woods of Publicity. Um, here you can see the first enemy of the game, the Reapers. They shoot fireballs as soon as 
uh, either the goat or the companion rat is in line of sight. Um, I didn't explain the companion rat. You can basically put down your companion rat, which is called Henry, by the way, um, down on the switch, or you can throw him around. That's pretty much how it works. Again, very easy to uh, understand, but quite tricky to master. Also, they are way too fast for me to explain everything in every single level, so I will simply try to point out the interesting portions. For example, um, um, every Reaper always shoots fireballs at you. And, well, if you get hit once as the goat, you die. So you want to avoid that. And one way to avoid getting hit by a fireball is abo uh, abusing the mechanic that your rat companion actually can absorb a fireball shot and throw him slightly in front of you and then basically absorb the fireball which would hit the goat in but instead is uh, absorbed by the rat companion. So, as you can see, those Reapers are very useful to solve some puzzles, to explode chests and burn crates. And they are already in the second soul level, which is always a bit of a, what would you say, br uh, break for breathing. Yeah, it's a nice rest point every uh, couple of minutes. Indeed. So, and very soon there is going to be a new mechanic introduced in this game, which I will be talking in a bit. But first, um, if you have noticed, this game actually has very good music, and especially in the next section, this is quite obvious to say the least. So if you would like this game, it's currently available in the Humble Bundle, and I highly recommend getting it. But enough for that for now. Um, as you can see, there are now ice blocks in the level. The Reapers can melt the ice blocks, and that's sometimes useful, sometimes it's not, depending on level. And in any case, if you push the ice blocks, they will always move as far as possible. <laughs> that's not and as dangerous as it looks. <laughs> yeah. And then go on. Also, here, in that level, you can see in Wolochin's screen right around, he places the rat on the switch, to hold it down. Normally what you're supposed to do is push down the switch with an ice block, but that's a bit slow. But as a result uh, for using the rat in this level, they have to use a boost jump. And let me tell you, they make this look way too easy. It's not. Also on the thing screen right now, you can see he's attempting a pretty much frame-perfect boost jump and rat throw to hit the switch up there. Woolagin is going more the traditional way of uh, getting the platform necessary to activate that switch. So it's pretty crazy <laughs> so now. Also here we have the new mechanic, the magic hat. This basically allows you to switch position with your rat companion. And this can be used in very creative ways in quite a few levels. And already in the next sheep room. You can see both uh, races or racers, racers are really close together still. Um, that's pretty much because both of them are, well, within one second of each other in their per <laughs> personal bests. Uh, which, which of us has the world record again? <laughs> <laughs> okay, currently the world record for by one second is Wulogin. Um They tied yeah, their record, um, I think, last week for quite a while, but... We'll see how this turns out in the near future. In any case, they practice quite hard for it. And just, just to be fair about that, uh, I've learned like everything about being good at this game from Stinger. So, <laughs> yeah, fair he enough. gets to have the uh, record for a little bit. Yeah. I'll see what I can do about <laughs> taking you back at some point. So, in any case, the next uh, section, the library. You can here see the rat shielding. The, basically, they are going to run straight through the fireball by hopping a little and then dropping down Henry to absorb the fireball shots twice. And once again on Woolagin's screen, ding ding, and the is through. Very quick, and it, this is one of the tricks that probably looks a bit harder than it actually is. The really hard portion of this game is really to always get the boost jumps and never miss the keys. And they are almost, oh yeah, through this level. Also here, a boost jump up to this um, 
conveyor belt, then dropping down Henry to bait out a fireball from the Reaper and, well, already going to the exit. Also, one thing to note, uh, those skull switches can only be activated by the goat. So they could not use Henry even if they wanted to. And both of the racers actually got this level really quick. This is, I don't think, quite the intended solution. There are a um, lot more switches, as you can see in many of the levels, than the racers generally use. But, well, it's all about speed, so you want to use the fastest way. Got all the switches. <laughs> <laughs> that was my goal for this run. Nice. Mine was to relax in this room. <laughs> well, the sheep soul rooms are basically a little bit of a work of art, to say the least. They have often very many switches which are not necessary to progress. In any case, the next area is the Hall of the Necromouser, which is generally all about power-ups for your rat companion. The first level will include a magic hat, and it's pretty special how quick you can get through this level if you simply know what you're doing. I'll simply let you watch this for now. Also. One thing I would like to note, if you are switching between your rat companion and the ghost, um, everything in between, any enemy will be damaged or killed. Also, the next mechanic coming up is going to be a staff of occult. I'm not sure how it's called. Something like that. In any case, it allows Henry, your rat companion, to clone himself four times. So that is used here to hopefully put down clones on the switches at no <laughs> Well, as you can see, this game is really difficult to do extremely precise because you want to use every single frame in this game to your advantage, but doing so is difficult. Also this level, simply watch. Okay. Well, it's a close race now. <laughs> <laughs> it is. So, yeah. Um, kind of the beauty of this game in speedrunning is, in any case, that there are so many possibilities to clear levels and optimize them. If you see, saw the previous level, you could simply go in each room and set down one rat clone to teleport to him. But that's slow, so you want to figure out where to place them properly. <laughs> Nice slide. Try hard. <laughs> <laughs> okay, very close race so far. But no matter whether one is 30 seconds ahead or not, this can all change in the very last section, which I will mention in a few seconds. First of all, the next section is the Halls of the Gleaming Crystal. Purple, I like purple. In any case, um, the first level has a Kind of tricky boost jump. This is probably the most difficult uh, boost jump required in the speed run, and both already got it. Look, making it way, look way too easy. In any case, you have to boost jump just a little bit higher than usual to be able to land on that trapdoor. Also, I can barely keep up with this. This is the cape, <laughs> and they can make Henry fly through the room. Well, and smash crates. And as you can see, if a key falls down into the abyss, it's actually automatically collected. Which is very useful, since you don't need to catch it. And this level is interesting. You're supposed to lead Henry all the way to the right with that uh, switch to make him jump all the way to the right and then all the way back to the left. But with a very precise switch, I'm not even sure, that's almost frame perfect, I think. Uh, you can make him just jump high enough to grab the platform and get to the next switch. Yeah, it's not quite frame perfect, but you've got a couple frames of leniency there. Yeah, it's quite tricky in any case. Mm -hmm. This is a 60 FPS game, so when he says a couple of frames... <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. In any case, um, the next section is... Oh. Uh, it's a graveyard. Oh yeah, exactly. Um, because we don't need 
to visit all the sheep souls, and we are, well, not required to get them, we skip the Temple of Adoration, since it's clearly the longer area of the ones you can actually skip in theory. So the next area will be the graveyard, and I think it's mostly straightforward. So if you could get in a donation or two, or plug in... Oh, uh, yeah, definitely. Charity, that would be good. Actually, I have a special $100 donation from Caitlin Gad, who claims to be an Escape Goat developer. She is. Oh, yeah, she is. Good luck to Stinger, PA, and Vulajan on the race. By the way, I patched the physics, so shouldn't break too much. <laughs> nice. Uh, thank you. Maybe. <laughs> um, unless it breaks some of our strats. <laughs> uh, $25 from PAC. Hey, guys, keep up the good work. Thanks for helping out this great cause. Joy watching as well. $50 from Daniel Raza. Hey, Vulogen, I told you I'd get a donation in during one of your games. I was hoping to catch Transistor, but I'm excited to see you play Escape Go 2, a game I'd never even heard of until just a few months ago. Good luck on the run. <laughs> well, I can all try. So yeah, as you might have seen, this boost jump is actually really difficult to get, and it looks tame, but it isn't. If you mess it up slightly, you can very easily die and lose a lot of time, as you can clearly see on Bulletin's screen. So in any case, um, the developers actually of this game are very supportive of the speedrunning community. Um, a little history, when we discovered the boost jumps, or more like CD Wario discovered the boost jumps, um, the developer uh, intended to patch it, but then decided not to, since it was a really high skill mechanic. I don't know the exact story, but I imagine something like that. Also, they uh, actually organized a speedruns live race for this game, which was very nice. Yeah, we got 35 people in a race back in April. I was yeah, actually informed that, that the, uh, the guy who created it was also in that race. Yes. Yeah, he was. Yeah, I think he got like 10th or something in that race. He wasn't too bad. Yeah, he did pretty good. Okay, in any case, the next section is now the lair of Toragos. Toragos is this bone snake thingy. And basically, it's simply, as soon as it bumps into a wall, it tries to chase you. As in, with your positioning, you can manipulate on where it's going to move. And this used to be a very nice, relaxing section for the end of the speedrun, until people came around and completely wrecked the strategies. So on Stinger PA screen, you may see an attempt to get an extremely difficult, probably the most difficult trick in the speedrun right now. He's going to jump on an ice block. Mid-air. Oh, yes. wow. <sighs> he already got it. Oh that my god. That is the race, my friends. Uh. This is I have incredibly about a difficult. percent success rate with that trick, and that's with just grinding it over and over in practice. I think I've gotten it about uh, four times in runs ever. This is incredibly difficult. Let me tell you, there is a backup strategy, which is also not quite the intended way to do this, but oh, okay. I hope Woolwich gets the backup strategy now, which is also quite fast. But obviously, jumping on the ice block is faster. One mechanic I failed to mention before now, um, Toragos can actually absorb the keys. And if he does so, he will grow a bit longer every time. And if he dies, he will release the keys into the door. Nice job. So that's a pretty basic, uh, important mechanic. So, currently Stinger Pia is ahead by just a little bit. <laughs> but <laughs> this can still change in the very last level, since the last level is also quite difficult to execute properly. It's technically Especially the second to last level, but it's the last level for all intents and purposes. Yeah, okay. There is actually... They don't even miss it half the levels in the entire speedrun. So if you would like to give this game a shot, I highly recommend you to do so, since pretty much all the levels are really interesting. So, last level. Teleport to the edge of that thing. Throw down Henry. Jump up to the middle of the switch and then. Ch ch oh my god. <laughs> wow, okay. <laughs> okay. That was quick. That was way too quick for me to explain. Sorry about that. Ready on time. Ready on time and time, time for Stinger PA. <laughs> nice. 
I think I might have tied That, 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 uh, go ahead, just skip the credits, doesn't matter. That ties the world record, guys. Yes. Holy crap. <laughs> and it was a deathless Oh my god. Wow. <laughs> You've got to be kidding me. <laughs> <laughs> well, as I've said, both of those guys grinded this out. Wow, my God! Let's <laughs> yeah. try too. If it weren't if it weren't for the the death over here uh, and and missing that nine dash T stray, it would have been a lot closer. But uh, I can't really complain. Time. Losing uh, time, time, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. okay. <laughs> nice. Nice job, dude. I can't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, that beats man. my TV by one second. <laughs> so yeah, if this strategy in the last level looked ridiculous, that's because it is. It's incredibly difficult. I've only done that like that's twice ever. <laughs> Fourteen thirty-one is not bad either. Yeah. Especially with one death. Oh, Both yeah. of our goals for the race were like 14.30 or less, and, mm -hmm. uh, and so doing this, <laughs> I don't even have words for that. That's that's fantastic. So yeah, okay. Stinger PA wins the race with a keyboard over Roller Chin <laughs> with a controller. Well, I just had to mention that. <laughs> Boo, keyboard sucks. Boo, not tonight. <laughs> not tonight. Um. Okay, thank you for that. And well, that's that, I guess. Uh, yeah, quick shout outs uh, to Caitlin Gad, uh, Ian Stalker, and Randy O'Connor, de the developers of this game. You guys are fantastic. Thank you for all your support. Uh, for those that, that don't know, they, they made multiple, on multiple occasions, changes to the game and push patches uh, just for us, uh, including if you looked in the top left corner during the run, there, were, there was a speedrun timer, yeah, and that was, that was added put in. specifically for us, yeah. But so thank you guys so much. And also shout outs to the EG2 community, uh, Theodrasil, Tropicalo, Chunkatuff, uh, Ortho Labs, Ortho Labs, yeah. Ortho Labs. Uh, you guys are all awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. That's you can that. cut us now. Yeah. All right, and that again was Scapegoat 2 by Vulgen and Stinger PA. Playing Scapegoat 2. Which I'm sure the devs were watching. I could tell. Uh, up next we have uh, Bro Force by Blood Thunder. Uh, and that's coming up shortly. Uh, but in the meantime, we're going to run a quick ad between games, give you guys a chance to stretch, take a break. Don't want to stare at a screen too long. Well, you can. Anyway, we're going to run a quick ad for you guys, and we'll be back shortly. <laughs> 